In-depth journalism in the Memphis community, The Daily Memphian is of Memphis, not just in Memphis, and seeks to tell the stories of this city. TheDailyMemphian.com. Truth in place. I'm Bill Drees with The Daily Memphian. We are joined by Shelby County Commissioner Henry Brooks and her attorney, Van Turner, who is a former county commissioner. We record this Friday, February 16th, 2024, and this is On the Record. We're here to talk about something other than the county commission or government, at least local government. Um, Commissioner Brooks, uh, two years ago this month, I believe, you filed a claim against the state of Tennessee that was based on adoption records that you got less than a year before in 2021. And I think it's fair to say you found some very surprising information in those records. Tell us tell us what you found in those records. Well, as you said, I, I have my I received my adoption records and in the records it showed that um I was searching for my birth certificate and in the records it showed that my records were sealed, which you know immediately caused some concern for me, a question. And after receiving those records, I discovered that I was a Georgia tan baby. I had been stolen from my mother. Mm-hmm. And and this was uh, the, the the name of the organization was the Tennessee Children's Home Society. This was a huge scandal that was national news starting in about 1950, even though the chain of events started well before that. And there is much more background about that in general in the story that this podcast is a part of. The very basic version is that thousands of children were adopted through the Tennessee Children's Home Society and specifically the Shelby County or Memphis chapter of the private adoption agency that was run by Georgia Tan. Tan and those who worked for her took newborn infants from their mothers, sometimes told the mothers their their children had died in birth when they had instead been adopted by couples out of town in many cases. Some of the children were old enough to remember their families, their, their birth parents, and were told to forget that and go along with the stories the society made up for them. In other words, the Tennessee Children's Home here was a black market for adoptions, where some children went to loving homes, others were abused, and the repercussions from all of those cases, even the ones with a happy ending, continue to be felt to this day. So the information in in your case was that, that they came to your mother right after she gave birth to you, right? Right. The next day, I was born on February 2nd, 1949. And on February 3rd, uh, my mother, who was 15 years old, was approached by um, May Heidemann um, uh, and a lieutenant of Georgia Tan uh, regarding uh, giving up her baby. But at the same time, my mother was under the sedation, um, sedation and after her, right. right, sedation, and and also she's fifteen years old. Right, right. So and and in and in some of these cases, uh, the 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 mothers who who signed signed these things were told that it was anything but an adoption. That that they, this was just the normal paperwork. All you got to do is sign here. And everything will be okay. This is completely routine, you know. Right, and 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 some right, and and in this case, after reviewing the records and looking at the handwriting, it appears on all of the documents, even the document that they allege was a surrender, appears to be the same handwriting, which is the handwriting of May Heidemann, mm-hmm. who who, who was working they, for Georgia Tan. Right, mm-hmm. right, right, right. So right. nothing. It didn't appear that it was my biological mother's. Well, it was didn't appear to be a different signature. Mm-hmm. Um, so, did did were your grandparents trying to undo this? Try, trying to find out where you had gone? My, ba- my grandparents, uh, Florence and Alfred Rodman, uh, they they approached. Um, May Heidemann at one point, um, and then at another point they 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 asked about the baby, and they were given the one around. They were told you need to come back and 
uh, fill out an application. Uh, and at that point, they had talked with Georgia Tan, and I understand from the records that my grandmother, Lawrence Rodman, and Georgia Tan had a verbal confrontation, and they told her that um, they could fill out an application, but the home would have to be investigated to see if the home was suitable for a child. Now, what sense does that make? Okay. Mm -hmm. So they filled out the application and waited and waited and waited. They never heard. So they called, when I called back, they went back to see them. And once they went back to see them, they were informed that the child had been placed in a nice home. Hmm. Yeah, they are unsuitable. Wow. Wow. The, 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 this is all. So, I, I mean, I, I can only imagine what you must have have gone through uh I really can't imagine finding out all of this I mean you you knew you were adopted right no I did not know oh you didn't I was okay three years old I did not know that I was adopted and it was only on one occasion that I'd heard that when I was really really young and the person that said it said it in just and of course, I asked my adopted mother, or I told my adopted mother what she said. She was older than me. She was a cousin also. Mm -hmm. And my, my adop uh, adopted mother, who I, who I loved at the time, just, she said, oh, no, don't worry about her. She, you know, she's crazy. Mm -hmm. And that was the end of it. Uh, this is a lot for anyone to find out, I think. So, yeah. so, so you you pursued this at 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 yeah. some point a couple of years ago. You found out, right? Right. I, I was after just researching in the Memphis Library. I mean, the uh, Memphis Room at the Ben Hooks Library. I re did a lot of research and got a lot of information about Georgia Tan and all of the things that she did. And then I was able to get some of my records uh, from the. Uh, uh, Tennessee Children's Services, post-adoption services, and it became even more concerning after it was so difficult to get the records. If I was adopted, I, I want to know, why can't I get my records? I mean, I'm 73 years old now. My, my, my adopted parents are deceased. No one knows anything about this. You have the information. Could you please send it to me? Well, on February 5th, 2021, they sent a, an acknowledgement letter saying that they received my request for uh, my birth certificate and my adoption records and all that. And then they wanted to charge me $150 to get the information. Now, all the time, they know, they knew that I was one of those victims of Georgia 10 because those records were sealed in a special place. Well, it, the interesting thing is, I, I went I went to the Memphis room in preparation for this, mm -hmm. and and they pulled out a box that had some information, including a report from 1951 that the state right. did on the home, and in one of the files, there there were also some listings of adoptions that were from 1948 through I mm -hmm. think 1950, mm -hmm. and and the Rodman's name names were were on there uh your, your grandparents names were were listed it was just a partial listing mm -hmm. of it but when you mentioned the name i remember seeing that in, in this file of photocopies that they had in the memphis room mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um and and i assume you saw the same thing that i, I saw i made copies of all of that uh in fact i remember my number uh the seven <laughs> Four six two, you know, seven thousand number seven thousand four hundred sixty two. Right, that was this baby's number. So it it just it was so just really incredible to see the number of children. I looked at nineteen forty nine, and I remember reading that book, The Baby Thief, when mm -hmm. Georgia Tan talked about the fact that she um, placed blonde, blue eyed children. And I kept reading about that and so much information about that. And all of the pamphlets and all of the news articles talked about that. And I said, well, I counted 13, and they call them colored children then, but it was 13 black children there when I was there in 1949. And then I believe when 
after Georgia Tan died and they were trying to get the affairs of the Tennessee Children's Home Society together, they mentioned there were three Negro children there left. So I'm not sure what happened to them, but I mean, I I'm, I do know that, well, I don't know, but I, I'm sure that they have some concerns. Some of them that may know that they're adopted may have some concerns. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Right. Right. And and so you um you 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 filed a claim with the state of Tennessee uh, alleging that it is liable and I think this may be where where we involve Van in the conversation because he's your attorney in this case yeah. but um you filed a lawsuit alleging that the state is liable for and I'm quoting stolen identity, stolen heritage, pain, suffering, relationship issues as well as a stolen biological family. This went to the State Court of Appeals, which on January 26th, just last month, dismissed the claim. Um, so I, I guess my first legal question here is, where where do you go from there? Um, it, it, are you going to appeal this? Yes, we are planning to appeal. Obviously, now we are. We were at the Court of Appeals, so it's already been appealed once. And so now... We have our last uh, resort, which is to go to the Tennessee Supreme Court. And we have to file to go to the Tennessee Supreme Court within 60 days. And basically, the the rationale is a little interesting because basically in the Court of Appeals opinion, it says that claims brought before a certain period of time, I think it was like 86 are not uh, uh, applicable or the claims commission does not apply. Uh, Yet, uh, they say that when you look at the claims commission, there is no statute of limitations issue. And so it's it's almost uh, the situation of where where do you go? If we can't go to the claims commission for relief, uh, then what is, you know, the, the law that applies to us. You're saying that the claims commission doesn't apply. Regular case law applies. Our interpretation of regular case law is that once the person learns of the harm that's been done to them, then the statute runs. So Commissioner Brooks had a year from the time period she discovered she was adopted or stolen uh, with the Georgia Tan operation to file suit, and she did so. Mm-hmm. And so we, we are, you know, I think this is a novel case. Certainly, we hope that the Tennessee Supreme Court would take this matter up and give some relief to Commissioner Brooks because we're pursuing the only course of action that we can pursue. Uh, they, the Claims Commission said it doesn't apply. So if it doesn't apply, then we are outside of the Claims Commission. And if we're outside of the Claims Commission, then the statute of limitations should kick in once Commissioner Brooks again found out what had actually occurred to her. And so uh, we'll see what the Supreme Court says, but, uh, you know, hopefully Commissioner Brooks will get the relief she deserves. And this could be a a case, a benchmark case, which could, you know, guide the rest of those individuals who who were harmed just like Commissioner Brooks. You Mm -hmm. know, what's so important here is that there's no accountability. There was none whatsoever. Georgia Tan did some horrendous acts. And I have a relationship uh, with one of the adoptees. She's older than me. Um, she lives in Alabama. And we've talked. But Georgia Tan and all the egregious things she did. Now, you know, I guess you can say I was blessed because I, I was you know, there in uh, February, and then moved out in April. So, I, and I don't remember anything, mm-hmm. nothing. But I've talked to some people who do remember some things, and they were horrendous. But the legislature had been forewarned about the activities, the the egregious illegal act, you know, illegal activities of Georgia Tan. Judge Bates uh, sent more than one letter. Uh, advising uh, Gordon, Governor Gordon, about what was going on. Um, Special Investigator Robert Turner, I mean, what's his name? Robert Taylor, was appointed by the governor 
to investigate, and he had an exhaustive uh, investigation listing all of the facts, not all of the facts, but uh, information from firsthand witnesses, uh, documents, and some adoptees about what Georgia 10 was doing. And it was a black market baby ring. And Georgia 10 had so much cover from so many influential people here in Shelby County. And so she was allowed to get away with it. So she did a lot of harm. And of course she died uh, two months before the investigation was publicized. But afterwards, you know, it was obvious that the, the legislature wanted to protect itself as elected officials because they sealed all of the records of Georgia 10 victims. Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, uh, the judge you referred to, Samuel Bates, who was a probate court judge oh, here, okay. he went to the state with his concerns, I believe, in 1945. In 1941, a state agency that was kind of an accreditation organization had dropped the Tennessee Children's Home Society right, uh, right. From, from its list, had said, you're not a member in good standing of this organization because of, of your, your practices on this. Um, so the Tennessee Children's Home Society was considered a, a private organization, but your argument is the state had an obligation to and and had some regulations in place in 1949 that gave them some oversight responsibility, right? Right, absolutely. They were uh, funding uh, the uh, Tennessee Children's Home Society to the tune of, at one point, $120,000 a year. And they had, um, they had licensure requirements by the state of Tennessee. And in so many documents, they're they're referred to as a uh, as a state uh, licensing, not a state, but a state or branch of a state children's uh, child placing society, mm -hmm. child mm -hmm. placing organization. It's just so many references and so many different documents that indicate there was a relationship between the state of Tennessee and the Children's Home Society. But one of the things that's so amazing is Georgia 10 and her influence, not just in Shelby County, but in Nashville, where back in, uh, I believe it was 44, she went up to Nashville because they were looking at changing adoption laws, requiring the professional practices, requiring licensing. But she had so much influence, she was able to go up there and lobby legislatures. And then after the law was passed, may have been 41, she was able to somehow, by hook or crook, get it changed before it became public chapter. Mm -hmm. And it's in a document. I believe that's in Robert Taylor's investigation. All right. In, in, in the 1951 report, it even talks about an instance where one of the groups that was opposing the change that Tan wanted said that she had a confrontation with Tan in, in a lobby somewhere in Nashville where this was all happening. And that Tan basically threatened to talk about the child that this woman had had given away. Which is her tactics. Yeah. Right, right. And, and and of course, we, we should point out, Commissioner Brooks, that that uh, you know about state government very well from your terms in the state house before right. you became a county commissioner. So so uh, it, it's not like you are are new to the ways of of state government and, us and, and how it can operate um, it, it, in some of the brochures, and of course, this was at a time when there was racial segregation mm -hmm. by law, um, and and the pamphlets from the organization that I've seen indicate that that it was only white babies. But the 1951 report makes it clear that black children were among those trafficked by Tan and her organization. Um, is, is this um, action? It is this revelation. Do you think it opens a window on that particular aspect of this? Because uh, most of the reunions of of people talking about these experiences have been have been groups of white people, 
Um, so mm -hmm. d d does this bring more exposure to, to the full scope of the Tennessee Children's Home Society? I think it does. And I think it, it with what we're doing now would be helpful, particularly to some who were there when I was there, who would be my age, which is 75, and maybe some 74, some of them. And, and some of them may, may be in the same situation that I was in, not know. Because in the Black community, our culture was a little bit different. Sometimes when children were adopted, well, in my case, you know, I wasn't told, but in a number of cases, people didn't talk about that because, you know, they felt that being adopted had a stigma. So children weren't told. So there may be some other children out there who have questions, uh, maybe have heard something about, you know, their birth, or maybe that they were adopted, but they they are not sure. Or maybe they've tried. Maybe they have tried to navigate this whole uh, convoluted children's services department and these seal records. Because I knew how to do it and I knew how to navigate it, it I wasn't intimidated. But because it's so convoluted, it's easy to become intimidated. I hope that we'll be able to maybe help some people who, who are interested and getting more information, facts about their birth, uh, help them to be able to navigate the process and maybe answer some questions to some people who just needed some answers. Right, right. It is it possible that there could be legislation in Nashville to 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 deal with this? You know what? Let me. I'm going to say this: the state has been so quiet on this for so long, and the resistance that I got. Uh, I, I couldn't I even ask for search assistance uh, to find my biological relatives. Uh, I was, they said they couldn't give me after a certain period, I forgot what it was, uh, a certain date, search services were no longer offered. So I'd have to do it on my own. Now, the legislature sealed the records. No one was held accountable. Nothing has been said. I do, and, and of course, this is all to make sure that they protect their image. They do not want the image out there that you know they put the lives of children or ignore the child, the lives of vulnerable children, so that this woman who they had been put on notice was a black market baby thief was continuing under their watch. So that's a cloud there. That doesn't look good. I do not believe that this legislature would take that up because they do not want to open that up and have anything reflect negatively on them. Even though they weren't involved, it's the legislature. It's, it's under that cloud. Right? Um, Van, what do you think about yeah. that? Yeah, I think so. I mean, they pretty much are exposing themselves to litigation which could go back decades, this would be the floodgate. But it's the right thing to do. And so perhaps there's a way to fashion it to where there's uh, some form of uh, an apology or some form of, of relief that perhaps is something that financially makes sense. You know, when you sue the state, there's the Torch Liability Act. So there's a cap on tort claims, theory being, if they didn't have a cap, people will be suing the government all the time and the government can function because of all the lawsuits that, would, you know, constantly come at the government. So I don't know what can be done, but I think something should be done by the state legislature. And perhaps some of the legislators would take this up and pursue it. I think it's bipartisan. As stated, it appears that most of the children which uh, were affected were were white children. And so, you know, this would mean that this would cross racial, uh, uh, ethnic, as well as religious lines, because in consultation with Commissioner Brooks, there were Jewish and Christian uh, young people who were part of this situation as well. So this is uh, multifaceted. It crosses all barriers and lines. And so this should be bipartisan legislation, which could hopefully bring some relief not only to Commissioner Brooks, but so many others 
who were ill affected by this this operation. You know, let me add one thing about that too. You know, people think of, you know, when you sue the state, and of course, you know, I want to get what is whatever the state is supposed to do. I want them to make it right. But what is it so important when you deny a person who has who's in my situation and you learn, you know, what they've gone through and you know the history of Georgia 10. And then when they come forth and say, I'm one, you know, I, I, I need you to make this right with me. It When they turn a deaf ear or, or they turn their back on you when they don't want to hear you or they give you a hard time, it's very hurtful. It's, you know, it's just like making you relive the thought that you didn't matter. I mean, your life, you, you were just nothing for them to think about it, it they didn't care because mm -hmm. you were just um something i mean georgia tan you were just a product so you're still being treated that way so an acknowledgement that this happened it was wrong it happened on the watch of xyz and this should have happened we should have done a b c d they, that needs to be done for people. It needs to be done for me. I'm not a throwaway. Uh, aside from from the limits on on what could be awarded financially, would opening the records so that so that other people don't have to go through what what you had to go through would that be part of it? I would hope so. Just make this easy for them. Open those records. Provide search services. Because some people's children were scattered all over the country. You had over 100 plus put in California, uh, uh, in the hundreds in New York, uh, uh, Texas. I mean, all over the place, in Philadelphia. So it, it's, it's, it's difficult. And I've, I've read some things. I don't know if you've read the book, The Baby Thief, and uh -huh. the people mm -hmm. yours. You know, people have tried their best to find out information but, you know, because of the process, they were just thwarted and given up. And some people have had some issues, uh, mental issues uh, with this, a bunch of folks in therapy. Um, so I, I think an acknowledgement by the state, just some verbiage, uh, human verbiage, humanity, empathy by the state uh, would help heal a lot of people and a lot of healing need to be done because what was done, I mean, just, it was just, just unnamely treacherous. Mm -hmm. a, 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 a final point. So you, you are still searching for your, your birth mother's family, right? Well, I've found my birth mother's only surviving sister. Uh, I've found her, but um, I don't know whether or not I have any sisters and brothers because my birth mother and my birth father are both deceased. And I've had difficulty accessing my birth father's records. Okay. He was mm -hmm. a mill he was in the Korean conflict. Okay. All right. We have been talking with Shelby County Commissioner Henry Brooks and Attorney Van Turner. Again, this podcast is part of a of a story that uh, uh, we're telling that uh, really has not been told before. And uh, we, we're very thankful you to, to you, Commissioner, for talking about this and Van for, for you talking about this as well. I'm Bill Drees with The Daily Memphian. This has been On the Record.